Okay, what we are going to look at today uh, is uh, just a little bit of uh, painting technique in Photoshop. And the reason we wanted to do this small exercise is I also wanted to, re to relate it to uh, marker rendering because I thought it was equally applicable to that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to render this small rectangular prism and what we've done is we've set up a standard flat brush. So if I click properties, I'll just go to presets. Okay, and you'll see it's an edging brush, which is a standard in Photoshop. Click OK. Then we go to the brush tip settings and we make that brush just a little bit fatter. So you can see in the brush tip shape, we can adjust it through there, make it just a little bit fatter. And we're going to click on wet edges. Okay, and that will simul simulate a, a marker type uh, brush. So we'll just make it slightly bigger. I'm just ad adjusting the diameter there. Okay, we've got it as a, as a cool grey colour. So we'll do the shaded face first. So just like in marker, we put in a flat wash. And you'll notice, just as when, when you're mark, rendering with marker, is that because it renders with a, a wet spirit on a marker, it dries in layers. So you can go back over the top of it and build the colour up to a certain extent. In Photoshop, by clicking on wet edges, you can simulate this effect to some extent. Okay, that's the shaded face. What we've done is I've clicked Select, Load Selection, and I'll just make a new selection. I've already pre-grabbed these before, so I'll click Run. Now I'll just opt for a cool grey slightly lower than that. So if that was a cool grey 6, we'll call this a cool grey 3. Flat wash in. And the light changes as you move away from the light source. Okay, I'm finding that just a little bit too strong. So what I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And you'll see the controllers there. I can adjust that slightly. So it gives us a little bit more tonal range. Click OK. Right, I'll just make a fresh layer for this. Select, Load Selection, and this is a pre-selected field that we've had before. Now this time I'll select Top. Okay, we'll go lighter still. Because on the top of the product we're in full light. So this time I'll make it a little bit bigger brush. The light's coming from the left-hand upper section there, so we're just going to wash from the back and then put in just a little bit more tone off the back edge there. So it gives it a slightly more reflective feel. Okay, select, deselect and you'll see that by leaving some of this texture on the surface you create a more realistic feel at the end of the day because it gives that sense of light varying across the surface okay, rather than just flat tones of colour. Now this is equally applicable to your marker rendering as it is to working in Photoshop. Now what we're going to do is just sample the top edge there so we'll just take a little eyedropper changes the colour in the colour selector down there we're now going to make it lighter still almost a pure white and we're going to switch to pencil tool and we're just going to press shift and now we've got just a slight radius on those edges okay so you can see there just a basic simulation of marker rendering but the the information here is that when you're working in wet Sometimes it's in your favour to not have the perfect wash. Having slight variation there can actually uh, work to your advantage as much as anything. Okay, I'm just going to merge those layers. Okay, create a layer underneath. 
switch back to the brush tool and we'll go back and sample this color there it is over there and we'll go nice and dark around it now so this is in behind it it needs to be darker still so if we were going for a cool grey 10 or 11 So this is the same as just setting up a profile line around you. That's a bit of a guide just for a quick uh, example of painting technique. Thanks, Connie. Bye.